Hello, my name is Hayes Fest, and today we will walk through a auto hotkey tutorial on how to do a setup for a minstrel instrument or song class. And, uh, we'll see how that works. So let's go ahead and jump over to our screen. If you guys need to download auto hotkey, check the description in this video and you can jump right to how to download and install AutoHotKey if you do not already have it installed. Go ahead and pull up our UI. So, song classes, especially the minstrel, is the jack of all trades. You have instant abilities, you have mez, you have demez, you have songs you have things that don't require instruments to play that are songs and stuff like that so uh, for this particular tutorial i'm going to show you how to work on a minstrel but you can still do the same type of things on a bard or other classes that require instruments or have instant abilities as well so currently i am on quick bar one down here at the bottom and this is bar number five of my quick bar. So we're going to bar number five. There's nothing set here. So let's go ahead and make our first attack be a style with our sword. So I'm going to show you how to swap to your sword or your main hand, use styles. I'm also going to add our direct damage spells and our ablative song since we can have all of those go off at the same time. And I'll also add a stick macro. So we put our stick macro onto our bar. Next, we'll just do an anytime style such as uppercut. We'll follow that up with a cleave. And we'll put a block macro on there as well, just in case I happen to block. Then we will make our ablative song on there, and we'll put two of our direct damage spells so that we can absolutely nuke the enemy right off the bat. So all of these buttons, all seven of these keys are going to be on our first button. So here uh, in the script, we're just going to say this is song class. Uh, this right here is part of the very beginning. So everything between use hook and use hook off will all be part of the script. This here, as long as Dark Age of Camelot is running, this script will be running. If you crash out of the game or if you exit the game, the script stops so that's great this one here for the set key delay we're gonna have a delay, a delay of zero which means there is no millisecond delay between the time you push the key and the time the uh, sequence goes off so when you push for instance right here we're gonna make this one when we push one everything that we put behind send is going to fire off immediately the 50 is the delay um, is the control alt and shift modifier delay so that means if you have something that has a modifier like shift control or alt the script will automatically hold that for 50 milliseconds before the next key is pressed so if you hold control and hit d that's a 50 millisecond delay so it holds control for 50 milliseconds if it detects nothing it stops if it detects something, it stops. And then this here, this toggle section, we can press shift and numlock to pause or resume our script as needed. So if you want to pause your script to start typing in chat, you can do so and then you can resume it after you finish typing. So for this first one, we're going to name this uh, DD styles 
I believe. Song. With stick. So in the game, let's go to macro, uh, let's go to Cubines. Start from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assign Cubines for all of the current icons at the bottom. So stick, uppercut, cleave, repost, wall of song, and both are direct damage spells. So what's gonna happen is when we push one, it's gonna stick the enemy. It's gonna use three styles, and then we're gonna use a blade of song, and we're going to use two direct damage spells, so it's going to be like a heavy nuke, especially if the uh, character is low life, you're going to do about 30% damage. We'll make it smaller so that you can actually see what I'm typing out there. So Qbind 5-1. It's going to ask us to record a button press for that. We'll make F1, which is stick. Uh, we'll make stick F1. Two. Um, if you want to just... Do this the right way so it's easier for you. Let's do this instead. We'll put everything in backwards. So we'll put repost as number two, cleave, and then uppercut. So we'll have F2, F3, F4. Okay. We'll make it 5, 4, F4. There we go. So now I've set it up so that when I pull up my Q binds, we now have F1 as stick, F2 as our after block style, 3 is the follow up to uppercut, and then 4 is the uppercut itself. We'll make Q bind 5 5 as F5. We'll do number six as F6, and we'll do number seven as F7. So in our script, all we've done is we've made it so that we do F1 as stick. That's gonna be the first thing that we use. I'm just go ahead and copy this a few times. F2 is our after block. F3 is our follow up to clee or uppercut. Four is uppercut itself. Five will be our ablative song, and six and seven will be our two direct damage spells. We will save this, and then we will run this as an administrator. Yes, okay. So let's go ahead and test it. So if I run over here, I select one of these dummies, and then I hit one, it sticks, but it doesn't change our weapon because we're using a, a instrument right now. So what we need to do is go back into our script and add our weapon. So to do that, we can either put the weapon on the bar and press it that way, or we can use our hotkey in game, which is B to swap our weapon. So in the script, what I'm gonna do is just use the B key. So here we'll just add B in front of stick and we'll say, save and run as administrator so now if i have my if i have my uh, instrument out and i hit one it immediately attacks i fail to do repost perfectly but once i actually get into the combat it automatically uses the correct style Now, the reason it's failing to use repost properly is because I did not block. So, um, if I just look up and hit, it worked that time. I think if you're too far away and you hit one, it's just going to auto attack. So, be mindful of that. So we can see that it uses the song, it uses both um, of the attacks. But if you spam this ability, it's going to toggle your song on and off. If that's something that you want to do. So after a bit of testing, if you leave the after block style off, it works a little better. 
So if you want to put the after block style on a different set, you can do so. Use the uh, conditional styles at the start of these strings um, at, at caution because if it's very important that you actually land a hit, I would recommend just going with the anytime style chain. But if you want to have a little bit of versatility, I would leave the uh, conditional styles like after parry, after block, after evade on there as well. Let's move on to side and back styles. We'll copy this string that down and we'll just rename this side and back styles and we'll make this button number two oh. what we could do is we could use side slicer and we could do amethyst slash since we don't have a back style we'll just use amethyst slash in its place and what we'll do is we'll make this side slicer and amethyst slash q bound to 5, 9, we'll make 5, 9, F9, we'll make 5, 10, 5, 10, we'll make that F11. Um, if you wanted to take it a bit further, you could also have your pet attack. So if you hold shift and select attack on your pet bar, it'll pull the pet attack macro to your hot bar. And then we'll just cubine this as F8 and in our in our uh, macro we just put F8 right into the string so on our script we have pull out our weapon stick F8 is make the pet attack the enemy F9 is side slicer F11 is our anytime style and F5 will be our ablative song so if we see the enemy off in the distance, we'll run up, hit him right in the side, the pet will start attacking, and if we're not on the side, we can hit the same button again to do Amethyst Slash, just like this. So if you have side and back styles, I recommend that you put the side and the back styles on the same key. What this will allow you to do is hit the enemy from the side and then hit the enemy from the back with the same button. And then just put your pet back on passive. Um, if you need to create a Q bind to put your pet on passive, you can do so. All you have to do is hold shift, click passive, it'll put the passive pet macro on your bar, and then you just Q bind that to whatever you'd like. And uh, as you're in combat, you can send the pet to attack, and then you can hit whatever you Q bind to set him back to passive and bring him back. If for any reason you have a pet that you want to target, so if you hold shift and click your pet's name, you'll get a pet macro. You can take that pet macro, put it on your bar, and no matter what you're targeting, if you hit that pet macro, it'll immediately target your pet. And a good thing to do with that is you can have it set to target your pet and then immediately cast Demez. Do I even have Demez? Yes, I do. So we could set that up to a single, so we have it do control F1 to target the pet, face the enemy, and then control F2 to demez. That's the problem. I was hitting shift, save. Run as administrator, say okay. You gotta make sure that the Q binds that you put into your script match up because if the modifiers in your Q binds don't match the, uh, match the modifiers in your script, it's not gonna work, which is the issue I was just running into. All right, there we go. So now it's working. That was the issue. So one thing to be wary of if you're doing queue binds and you're setting things up uh, on your script, if you have modifiers like F1, which is our stick macro, and then you start putting con like control and shift and alt modifiers on it, there's a chance that the script will misfire and it will try, if I just spam zero here, it, uh, it has a chance that it will try to stick the enemy rather than just perform the spell. So be wary of things like that. I was running into that issue. Let's go to page six. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can either set it up so that your hotkey for switching to your two-handed weapon is what you press, or you can just drag your instrument to your hotbar. 
however you want to do it. And then you can put all of your songs onto the hotbar. So you could do motivational anthem or heal over time, your power song. If you're a bard, you can do your endurance song and your mez. Everything that requires your two-handed weapon or your instrument to be out, you can put all in the same bar. And what you do here is you cue bind your instrument or if you just press the hot key to swap to your instrument, you would use that. But for this case, we'll just do everything on the hot bar as a cue bind. And so let's use six one and put it as, we'll say control F5. And then our anthem will be control F6. We'll use our heal song as control F7. We'll use our power song as control F10. And we'll do control F11 for the mez. So you can have it set up so the individual keys play a song. What that would look like is you press, let's say, Z, right? So let's say you want to set up your hot bar or your um, script so that just name it speed song. And you can put this as Z. And For this, you can do N if you're going to use your keyboard hotkey or whatever hotkey it is for your two-handed weapon. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to use what we set the uh, slot as, which is 6-1, control F5. Put our control modifier in and then F5. And then we'll do control F6 to do our motivational anthem. File, save, run as an administrator. One thing we can do is, if you want to add on to this, you can do pet passive if you're a minstrel. So we could put our pet passive onto the bar and we can make six five, or no, I'm sorry, six six. We can make that uh, control Q. So here we can add control modifier Q. Now we can run up, tag the enemy, hit one, blast them with a couple of attacks, and then run away, hit Z. It'll play our anthem and it will set our pet to passive so that we can get out of there. Get rid of the pet passive. We'll do this as We'll say five. We'll make it swap to our weapon. And then we'll do control F7. I believe is what our cue bind was. Control F7 for power song. No, this is heal song, sorry. Heal song. Control F7 for our heal song. We'll make this number five. So we have control F5 to swap to our instrument and then control F7 to toggle our song. Yes. So now if we have our weapon out and we're attacking. Over here, hit this guy. And you want to swap to your power song. All you have to do is hit five and it'll immediately swap to your weapon and play your song. One of the most important things you'll probably do is mez and demez a single target. All right, so for mez and demez on a single target, 
you have to have your instrument out. So we'll do this as the two-handed version. So we'll swap to N. We'll do bass is my F key. We will do control F5, pull out our instrument. We will then do control F11, which will be our single target mez on an enemy target. So control F11. And then after that, we will do our single target demez, which I believe we assigned to control F2. F2. So this should swap to our two-handed weapon, which is our instrument, face the target that we want to hit, um, and then either mez them or demez them. Um, face is completely optional here. You don't need it. It's just kind of a convenience of life or a, a proof of concept here. So. Let's go ahead and file, save this. Let's go ahead and run it as an administrator. And we need to hit the yes button on that. So this is our three key. So if we have our weapon out and we target an enemy and we hit three, it'll immediately start swapping to our weapon and we can move around and mez them. Uh, if you don't want to run, the face portion of this will kick in. But if you're moving around, you won't face. So if, if we don't move and we hit three, it'll face the target and mez them. And you can you can move around while you're doing that. But if you're holding W and you hit three on the enemy, you won't face. You'll just keep moving forward. So it's dual purpose. If you're if you're peeking around the corner of a keep and you hit three you'll be able to move back and forth while you're still mezzing. If you're running forward, you can hit three and keep moving. Now, if the enemy is targeted, like this guy here is mezzed, I can hit three. Can't move while you do this, but you can hit three and it will demez your ally. So if you see someone on your group is mez, you just click them on your group you hit three and it casts a demez on them and it faces them for convenience. That way you don't get the error message that your target is uh, not in view. So three demezes the enemy or demezes our allies. And then you hit three again while you have an enemy selected and it mezzes them. Great for bards, great for minstrels. Have your mez button and your demez button on the same key and then you can have your AOE mez on a different key, or you can have your AOE mez and your demez on the same key. If you wanted to add your single target stun onto something, you could put that also onto your hot bar. Put it on bar five. We don't really have any room on bar five. Bar six it is. And then we Q bind it to control F4. Six, seven, control F4. Um, and with our stun, we could either put it on our side and back style or we could put it on our DD styles. Um, or you can just not put it on anything and just manually use it, whichever you prefer. Or you can just cube it so that it's easier to reach on your keyboard so we can make our instant stun Y if we wanted to. So we could do 6, 7, make it Y. And then we could have, if you really wanted to do it on your style bar, you could. You could just make it Y. I don't recommend that, but... 
wherever you fit feel like a stun would fit into your repertoire of attacks and you could do that so two will now also stun the enemy all right so power song is going to be button number six it's going to use ablative swap to our two-handed weapon and then use control f10 for power song thing the wrong one mine is administrator there we go so now it should do what our weapon here a single keystroke it should do ablative and then power song and swap to the correct weapon there it goes we'll just say grab pet make this control e control e is what will make it and we'll do tab and then we'll do alt 10 no alt 0 because alluring melodies is here so we'll do tab target and zero. So maybe if you're running in a BG, this will work. Um, we'll pull up Motivational Anthem. And it's going to run up. I'm going to hit Control E. We'll see if it targets nearest and grabs the pet. It does. So if you're running with a BG, you can spam Control E. It'll tab the near nearest target and it will try to in pull them under your influence. So... He just attacked me. I hit Control E. He's immediately back under my, um, back under my will. And you probably need to have your weapon out, your your instrument out to do that. So, in the macro, we'll put N to pull out our instrument. We'll hit Tab so that it tab targets, and then we'll hit uh, Alt Zero so that it runs alluring melodies, and then we'll say OK as administrator so even if you're in the middle of combat you can just hit control e it'll swap to their appropriate weapon instantly grab your pet back and then you can have them start attacking again i'm attacking this guy and my pet for any reason releases so now the pet's attacking me. I can hit control E. He's immediately back under my influence. Um, a lot of minstrels I see use stun and then go into mez. So you could actually do a stun into mez if you wanted to. So if you this do stun into mez. This button eight. That's what I was missing. So it pulled out our weapon or our, our two-handed weapon. I don't need control F5 here, I just need control F eleven. File, save. There's the administrator. When I press eight, it should stun the enemy and then swap to our instrument and mez them. So eight. So now we have a way to stun an incoming opponent and then... Interesting. What if I do tab? Zero. Yeah, this works. We're attacking this guy. He's attacking with me. He releases. Roll E. Okay. So we'll do tab, tab, charm. That seems to work a little better. We're attacking the enemy. We lose charm. Hit control E. It immediately grabs the pet again. So hitting tab twice seems to be a lot better because when you hit tab once, you're targeting the enemy that you're engaging and then when you hit tab twice if you're solo by yourself and the enemy is by itself 
there's no other enemies around, it'll Im immediately grab your pet again. And then you also have a way to manually set your pet to passive and attack if you want. I have it on Alt-1 and Alt-2 because I use those frequently for all kinds of stuff. If you have multiple consumables like uh, Heal Potion with Heart of Legion, you can put Heart of Legion and a Heal Potion on the same Q-Bind. You just have to make sure that you're not in combat. You have to stop attacking, hit your button that uses your consumables, and then go right back to attacking. All right, so we've looked at a variety of things you can do with a minstrel. Um, there's probably a lot more you can do with a bard because you're going to have mez, root, demez, healing, things like that. So with a bard, there's more you can do. Um, with the minstrel, there's different things you can do. So like stun into a mez and then play a blade of song and things like that. So when it comes to Hibernia and Albion, there's going to be a little bit of differences, but you should be able to put them on your hot bar, put in some Q binds, and then put those Q binds into the script and test it out and it should work just fine. Just make sure you save it and then run it as an administrator. Um, we found a way to, if we lose control of a pet, we can pick the pet back up. We have a way to pull a pet while we're moving on the fly without having to target anything. We have a way to, um, attack the enemy from the side or back. We have a way to stun the enemy and mez them. We have a way to attack with our DDs. Um, if you want to, you can even set your DDs up on a separate key and just use them both by themselves. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. All of our songs now swap to the appropriate weapon or melee and it also uses the uh, song when you press the key and one, one button press rather than two or three. can't think of anything else we can really do with this character outside of that but if you end up getting creative and, and you can figure something out that works really well for you you know just throw it in the comments or if you have any questions or concerns um, just let us know and we'll be um, putting the final version of the script in the description below so if you just want to copy and paste the uh, end result that I ended up with here you may do so and uh, I'll put auto hotkey information in there as well so if you don't know where to find auto hotkey check the link descriptions below and I'll walk you through on how to download and install that so I'll put the I'll put the Phoenix rules in the discord so that you can uh, check out that as well as long as you're using um, multiple key presses with a single button you're fine but if you start putting loops timers and delays you're gonna have a problem so uh, don't recommend doing any of that so I'm Hazefest. It's been a great experience learning the minstrel because I haven't actually got to do this yet. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment or a question below and I'll, I'll answer whatever you have uh, on your mind. Or if you need clarification about something, I'm pretty active. So I should be able to get back to you really quick. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. If you feel like this video is going to be helpful for somebody, go ahead and let them know to come over and watch it. And uh, hopefully it will improve their gameplay as well. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I'll catch you later. Hey, guys. If you are wanting to download AutoHotKey, all you have to do is go to AutoHotKey.com. There's the full URL at the top. It'll come to a page like this. You'll see the AHK. You'll see Download. You'll click Download. Download the current version. And then once you download the current version, it'll show up down here. If you don't see it down here by my head for any reason, you'll see it. You'll see it down there in the corner. If you don't see it there for any reason, just hit Control and J at the same time. It'll pull up your downloads page. This works for a variety of um, different internet browsers. So you should be able to just click Show in Folder and then it will show up in your downloads folder. Once you download AutoHotKey, you will need to reboot your computer. Once you reboot your computer, you can go to your desktop, 
and right click and then you can go to new auto hotkey script and then you can name this whatever you want whatever you want and then right click edit script it'll pull up a page like this with a bunch of gibberish on it and you'll just select control a for select everything you'll and then you'll do control v to paste the whole thing here and then you can go in and, and you can name this whatever you like you can go in and change whatever you like to set it up to your play style which is what i recommend and once you save it once you save it you can just right click and say run as administrator it'll put a little hotkey icon down here at the bottom if you don't see it just use the little up arrow chevron right sorry it will appear in the bottom right